Welcome to this week's market drama. We'll begin with the S&P 500, which was essentially flat. It was down 0.2% for the week. Uh, NASDAQ was down a little bit more, down 0.4%, but NASDAQ's still up 31% for the year. Let's not forget about that. Oil is a big story once again, though. Oil prices were up 4% for the week. Year to date, now oil prices are up 13.5%. Uh, just keep in mind that the average price for um, WTI prices, uh, West Texas intermediate prices, which are the ones that we follow here in the US, uh, is 75 bucks per barrel. Uh, this past week, we were uh, at about 90 bucks per barrel, right? So big increase there. Uh, we are still below the peak that we saw last year at 123. But nonetheless, it is a pretty big jump. The main driver there for prices to have gone up is production cuts that were announced by Saudi Arabia, which is a top oil exporter, uh, and Russia, right? So it's a simple kind of demand supply type situation where supply has been cut. Demand has slowed down, but not as much by, uh, as supply has been cut, right? So that's why oil prices have gone up. And that leads into the macro story. The biggest indicator last week was CPI data here in the United States. Headline consumer price index rose 0.6% for the month of August, uh, which is up 37 from a year ago, that's a faster pace than July's 3.2%. The biggest driver there being uh, oil prices affecting gasoline prices, right? So gasoline prices uh, increased 10.6% month over month, and they contributed more than half of CPI's gain, right? So when oil prices go up, gasoline prices go up, and it's essentially a tax on the consumer's pocket because that leaves less dollars to go spend on those new Air Jordans, right? So that's uh, on the headline side, core CPI though, right, which excludes food and energy prices, tends to be less volatile. Uh, went down from 4.7 percent year over year to 4.3 percent. Uh, that is, you know, a deceleration of growth, but it was a bit above expectations uh, from you know what consensus was looking for. So inflation essentially went from wow, all all uh, indicators point uh, green right, uh, moving in the right direction to uh, oil prices are becoming a bit of a wrinkle there. Separate from CPI, we had retail sales numbers for August come out. Uh, they did go up 0.6% uh, month over month, but majority of that growth came from gasoline prices, which we mentioned is not necessarily where the consumer wants to be spending their money. If you exclude all kind of the gasoline prices and the more volatile numbers, uh, it's called a control group uh, of retail sales. And is the input that goes into GDP calculations. That one only grew 0.1%. Uh, and there was revisions down for, for July, right? So the consumer is starting to see uh, a bit of fatigue when it comes to spending. Not quite a recession, right? But we are starting to see some more weakness there uh, in the numbers. This week, Tuesday, we have housing star data for August. And then for sure, the biggest highlight of what's coming up this week is the FOMC meeting, right? The Federal Reserve uh, meeting on Wednesday. They provide a statement of the economy and the inflation that everyone's going to be watching very carefully. That's it for this week. Stay tuned for next week.